Okay, folks, I got another uh, video for you with Andrew Tate and Pierce Morgan. So this one, I, I personally call it the, the second time that they had a discussion or round two. I mean, it's this one's kind of short. It's only nine minutes. But I believe this is around the time where Elon Musk was buying Twitter or maybe had bought Twitter. So they had, uh, Pierce had Andrew Tate on sort of to discuss that, that thing. So yeah, let's get into it and see what they talk about. Well, joining me now is Andrew Tate, whose videos have been viewed billions of times online, but he's been banned from pretty much every mainstream social media platform, including Twitter. Uh, Andrew Tate, uh, welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Um, your take on this, I think, is quite interesting because you've been a victim of being, uh, if victim's the right word, but you've been removed from social media platforms for your opinions. Um, Elon Musk has dedicated himself, he says, to restoring free speech. Uh, do you think that's going to include you, for example? I don't think it matters if it includes me or not. I think what's important is that free speech is the number one weapon against absolute tyranny. And although you cannot have complete free speech because then conversations completely break down into asinine insult fests, I do like the idea of the changing of the guard when it comes to control over information. Is it So we do know as of this time right now in December um, he has been reinstated on Twitter so it did happen so Elon Musk did bring him bring him back Is it possible Andrew Tate to actually police something like Twitter to, to be a platform for genuine free speech or is it so toxic and tribal now that whatever happens you know before we had all the all, people on the right screaming away that they were being no platformed and so on now you've got all the people on the left screaming that they're being no uh, you know d diminished in some way uh, it's it's very tribal very toxic can musk cut through that and if so how so my take on, on pierce's question would be that yes you can and it would be that you need to essentially remove the the crazies to the very edges of this debate uh, of this conversation rather, so that maybe that 10% on either side, you, you're gonna have to get rid of them, like the crazy left and the crazy right. Like they probably can't participate. I don't know what percentage it is, but I'm just saying there's gonna be some people that just can't participate because they're they're nuts. Um, and an interesting way to look at it is if you think about, you know, the average intelligence of, of somebody, right? Like average is 50%, that's the average in the middle take the average person okay and you're, you're thinking to yourself yeah average person not that like crazy smart like you know just pretty average and now just go down 20 percent. now you're at 30 percent. just think what, what are those people and then just think go down uh to 20 percent or 10 percent what about that five percent like, just, just think, like, you went from average, an average person, and now you went down to, like, 5%, 10% intelligence level, or 20%. Like, these people are going to be, well, at, at some level, there's just going to be people who are just not functional in society, but there's going to be people who are just not capable of having a civil discussion, not capable of thinking properly they're just they're just they're just not going to have the intelligence to control themselves so when i i just if you just think about it that way then i mean it's obvious that a certain amount of people just won't be allowed like if they're on there they're just so ridiculous that you're just gonna all have to mute them or just ignore them but yeah, it's going to be extremely difficult. There's always going to be one group of people who are extremely unhappy, but I think that anybody who's perspicacious enough to understand the truth of what's been going on in the world recently will know that the left and their narratives have certainly been protected for a very long time, and the universe has swings and balances, and God often restores balance to the universe, and perhaps it might swing the other way for a while. I truthfully I'm a person who believes that all points of view are extremely important because as soon as you block points of view, you have absolute tyranny. And in a way, it's... If they have points of view and they're not just, like, shitters, like, purposely just 
they're not there to add anything. They're just there to start fires and like blow things up and threaten people. That's different. So there's going to be a certain group amount of people who are just going to be so ridiculous that you, you it's like they just add nothing. It's sort of self-defeating, isn't it? Because you carried on getting huge attention. It was interesting to me that when you came on the show, for example, we've had, I think, nearly six million people have viewed the whole interview that we did, which is a huge number of people, certainly far higher than watched it on conventional television. So you have a whole you have a whole world out there online which operates away from social media platforms. Yeah, uh, I've been very, very successful in spite of them, but not many people can do that. Uh, I, I'm in a pretty unique position, but I think that everybody needs a voice to a degree and social media platforms are now the most important platforms on the planet. They control information and they influence real world decisions and they influence people's perception of reality. The last few years of COVID have been a perfect example of what happens when you censor one side of the argument and you only allow one point of view to be purported by the matrix in and of itself. And that's how you end up in tyrannical situations. I think you were just discussing that, Piers. Yeah, and I think that's a perfectly valid point. You know, people have quite, I think, quite rightly held me to task over some of the positions I took during the COVID pandemic, uh, notably when the scientists said as a definitive fact that you, you couldn't transmit the virus if you had the vaccine. It turned out that wasn't true. And I based my observations on that supposed fact and said, right, well, in that case, if you refuse to be vaccinated, you shouldn't get the same rights as people who've been vaccinated. If, if it's true that if you're unjabbed, you can pass it on. It's Just think about what he said there, right? Like, we all know that not to be true now, but just like, just for ourselves as people, if you ever feel yourself like you're going to say something that's extreme, you know what I mean? Because that's an extreme view, what he's saying. You just like before you say that, assuming you're not like the person who blurts it out, but just think to yourself, like, okay, I'm thinking this. People who don't get the vaccine shouldn't have the same rights because they are going to be transmitting this virus to other people because they're not willing to get it. So they shouldn't have the same rights. They shouldn't be allowed to go out. They should have to stay home, whatever. They need to be segregated from from the good people. It's like, you almost have to like, it takes, it takes a person to like, to, to, to think that, say it, and then recognize like, that sounds really extreme and then not broadcast that. So it's like an introspection on ourselves and what we believe and what we think. I think if everybody could do that or the majority of people could do that we would be in a much better society because the amount of times we say something and we literally put our foot in our mouths like we believe something so much because oh we saw this one thing so that mean that means it's true oh my god it'd be a better place be a better world it turned out actually there's not much difference whether you've been vaccinated or not and at that point i changed my mind uh, uh, but I, I felt that yeah, there were a lot of people who were being deplatformed from Twitter at the time for questioning the validity of scientific statements, and they mm -hmm. would then be a complete U-turn. So I do think it was a very interesting period, actually, for testing what free speech it was means. Actually, it was actually worse than that. You're right, Piers, but it was actually worse than interesting because what happens is when you censor an entire side of the argument and only allow one side of the argument to have a voice, you are changing reality in real time. You are shaping the world. The only reason that scam continued as long as it did, and the only reason people didn't get to see their own parents get buried, and the only reason people sat and mass missed cancer appointments because they were scared of the common cold was because they were censoring anybody who said anything contrary to the purported version of events that the mainstream media decided they want the entire world to swallow. It's beyond simply interesting, and it's beyond simply uh, funny or coincidental. They yeah, are uh, I mean, I will, I will, I will. It he brings up a good point. Like there were so many other effects, right? Like those, and those are immediate effects. So like people who couldn't get treatments for other diseases or illnesses that they had, etc. So you, you right away had that effect, right? And for various reasons, like I even here in Canada, we had places where 
um, non-vaccinated people were protesting outside of hospitals and blocking the uh, ambulance from getting into the hospital. And so, yeah, I'm sure a lot of times that didn't do anything. But there could have been somebody who really needed to get to the hospital right away, and now you're blocking an ambulance, which is a crime, right? Or slowing it down, impeding it. And maybe those 10 seconds or one minute or whatever, you know, that happened was a critical time uh, for that for that life and death situation, right? And maybe maybe it never it never was. I personally didn't hear of any uh, deaths that happened uh, due to that. But I mean, I mean, it could have, right? I don't know. Um, I didn't really follow that that closely. But it's it's, and that's just an example on the on the on the non-vaccinated side or unvaccinated side. And then we had the trucker protests here in Ottawa, um, which it's so muddled the facts there. I don't. Ugh. It's, it's, you know, if you listen to the left-wing media, you hear one thing. If you listen to the right-wing media, you hear another thing. Um, I just take the position sort of in the middle that I'm sure that they they did some bad things um, uh, or they had some negative effects, obviously, on the people who live there, right by the parliament buildings and people who had to get to work or businesses, etc. And I heard, like, if you're playing music and, and, and having, like, trucks revving engines or whatever they were doing i mean yeah it's going to have an effect so uh, but they also did a lot of a lot of good things like raising awareness raising money feeding feeding uh uh, uh i don't know i guess if they were poor or homeless people or whatever they did cleaning up garbage but i guess would be maybe a lot of their own garbage i don't know um so i mean there's good and there's good and positive there's positive and negative sides to everything now, with this COVID thing, we had some negative effects during COVID. Like, people, like, got messed up. People committed suicide. People's relationships fell apart. Um, some people got stronger out of it, got more in shape. Other people got less in shape. Like, there's a whole range. And we are entering a part of our... Uh, uh, we're going to have the effects of the lockdowns for the next i don't know what do they say at least five years right just there there might be a recession coming we have all this crazy interest uh, rate hikes if you're in the canada the united states i don't know how it is in other parts of the world interest rates where they just keep raising it raising it raising it um because people got payments right for being off of work people still jobs uh companies can't fill jobs um you know just just looking at the interest rate like now us being able to afford things the supply chains i mean going to the grocery store things cost more money i'm kind of just rattling things off here at high speed but the coming years is going to be a whole bunch of effects due to this due to covid due to the lockdowns um i don't know we'll see what the hell happens but it is it, it's more than just the immediate thing so everybody when they when they're looking at like how should i be planning my next few years just keep in mind we're still going to be dealing with all this crap from covid for the next few years so it, i am not a financial person so obviously i don't have any idea how long but one thing you're continuously hearing from financial uh, folks at least the ones that i listen to is there will be uh, a long effect you're going to be seeing it, so just keep keep that in mind. Um, we're we're seeing it right now, and it's still it's just going to continue. I mean, we'll challenge you on one thing: it's not the common cold, right? COVID nineteen has killed six point six million people. It is one of the most deadly viruses, certainly of our lifetime. So it wasn't the common million. cold, but I do think it is completely justified Worldwide, for people to say we should be more cautious. I think about accepting during fast moving pandemics, the word of scientists is being sacrosanct because on a number of things from the use of masks to the efficacy of vaccines and preventing transmission, they did massive U-turns. You know, what's interesting actually, I heard that, uh, uh, I don't know if it was ever in Africa or certain places in Africa, they got COVID and like it barely affected their populations. Like they had very low uh, 
death rate and serious illness rate. I guess because of other, uh, what is it, malaria, malaria medication or something? I could be getting this wrong, but um, I guess they just deal with different illnesses and diseases there and different medications, and they were just better, they're, they were naturally better at fighting it off. So I think, <laughs> I thought that was interesting. I've read enough history books to know that the people who do the censoring are never the good guys. And they've been censoring a lot of arguments for a very long time in the name of good. They are weaponizing virtue, and it's always in the name of tyranny. Anybody who is out here trying to silence an entire side of an argument on any subject, whether it's COVID-19, immigration, anything else, they are the evil people who are out for absolute mind control of the populace. And they well, should I be I certainly agree. I certainly agree that I think the healthiest thing for any de democracy is for all views to be aired and debated. We seem to have lost the ability to debate. You know, when I interviewed you, yeah, we had a few fractious moments, but actually I thought it was a pretty spirited debate between people who perhaps had, you know, preconceived views of each other. And I've got no problem interviewing you now about these because I think you have an interesting uh, take on this stuff. And that's the key to life. When you reach that level of adolescence in your mindset where you can't handle any point of view that is contrary to your own, then you're truly a broken person. And that's what the internet is purporting. It's very interesting you said about Twitter being tribal. There's a large mm. contingent of people on Twitter who simply cannot handle reading an opinion which differs from their own. And that yeah. is a degree of immaturity that we do not need adults to be functioning with in the modern world. No. I personally, like, I just think that's crazy. I, I can't even imagine being that kind of person who like reads something on Twitter or on social media. It's just be like, like, oh my God, this pisses me off so much that it like, I, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand how you get there. That's just, it's just wild. It's just wild. I'm just not like that at all. I read things all the time that I disagree with. And I'm just like, I don't agree with any of this. I think this is complete bull crap, but I, it's like, it doesn't upset me the way this, these other people seem to get upset. At. It's ridiculous. No, I agree. Uh, if you were Elon Musk, this idea of charging $8 now a month, uh, whatever it is, to access the blue tick premium Twitter account, would you do that? Would you pay the extra? I think that social media companies for a very long time have lived in an absolute fantasy where they've printed money from thin air by charging people for pixels, and they grew into these large conglomerates with too many staff sitting around doing nothing, having coffee breaks. And Elon Musk is a businessman. He's walked into the office and he's firing a bunch of people who are messing around doing nothing. And he wants his business to make money as it absolutely should. And how he decides that happens is his prerogative. I don't see why we should sit and accept that a website needs 200,000 people sitting around discussing in long meetings, sitting on bean bags about policy of human rights of some garbage. When he's come along and said, no, I'm a businessman. We're going to charge for our service. We're going to reduce the number of staff. And we're going to be a functional coherent company, as they should be. And it's his prerogative to do it as he's bought the company. I think he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I mean, the $10 thing, we'll see. I, I guess we'll see. I know he rolled it out. I, I haven't done it. I don't know if I will. Um, I want to understand, I guess I need to understand more like what I'm getting for that. I know it's like, it's uh, sort of like priority cues. If you're a blue check, you go into a different queue than uh, somebody who's not so if people if you want people to see your messages right like i think if you're a blue check it's e it's easier to see it something like that i don't really under i don't really know all about it um but i just think like if you're not paying for a service then how are they making money and we always talk about ads but i'm like do ads really make that much money like, are they really making that much money to pay all those employees? I just, it's like you always, um, uh, different people have said it. Like, if you don't know who, if you don't know what the product is or service that they're selling, then you're the product. Or the, so they're just taking our information, what we're doing and selling it. So if paying $10 a month saves them from having to sell our personal information so we can use the service then i would say it's a good thing and anyway, I, I i would prefer that
I mean, I, I don't disagree because I remember the appalling censorship of the New York Post exclusive uh, about Hunter Biden, the son of the president, about his laptop. This is three weeks before the, the election that Joe Biden won. Uh, he was heading, you know, to a possible victory, but it was tight. And that story, they reckon, could have tipped it either way. But it was completely suppressed and censored, uh, starting with Twitter, then Facebook, then others. Twitter literally locked out the New York Post account for two weeks. You know, now that we know, now we know with the Twitter files or whatever that they've been releasing on uh, on Twitter under Elon Musk, that I mean, the government was involved in this. The FBI, FBI was involved in this. The politicians were involved in this. They wanted it to be silenced, and it was. And they they didn't have justification to do it, so they just did it anyways. Like it. <laughs> And if Pierce is, you know, I don't know, I didn't follow the election closely enough to see how, to know how close it was, the U.S. election. But if that was the case, had that come out and people had actually read it, you know, um, read the story, maybe Donald Trump would have got elected. I don't know. I don't know if that would have been better than having Joe Biden being elected because Trump was a very polarizing figure. But regardless taking no sides and who should get elected, right? The fact that they censored or, you know, uh, blocked the information from one side, but didn't block it from the other side is pretty damning. Like that's pretty damn bad. For breaking a completely true story. And I thought that was shameful. When, it's worse than shameful. It's worse than shameful. When you control information, you control the real world. They affect the real world in absolute in real time, they are genuinely affecting the reality people live in. They are not just a company. They're not just a social media platform. It affects absolutely every single person on the planet when it changes who is elected. I don't want to comment specifically on Hunter Biden or the laptop. I would never kill myself. But I don't think it's fair that they would put, hide certain key information that close to an election. And the fact that they've done that was done specifically to affect, to affect the world that we all live in. And we all have to suffer the consequences of those things. So to sit and say that these companies can just do whatever they want and they're private, et cetera. No, free speech is beyond important for democracy. It's important for the reality that we exist under. Andrew Tate, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. That was a good, that was a good, uh, a good interview. I thought it was more cordial than the original first one uh, that they did. I thought it, I thought it was pretty good. You know, it's obviously a lot shorter. Um, I don't know what he's saying at the end there. I wouldn't kill myself. But is that in reference to his belief that if he talks about things that they don't want him to talk about, he'll end up like Epstein, put in prison, and then all of a sudden be dead? That's pretty. That's pretty high level. I don't know anything about that. It's <laughs> gonna leave that alone. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, my commentary on this clip and we will talk to you later.